Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. Do we need any more evidence to break the story? Bachelor in Paradise is dead. Uh, at least this year. It ain't happening, folks. So make your plans accordingly, but it should not be on the beach in uh, Salucita. Am I pronouncing that right? Mexico. Uh, Wells uh, lets it slip, or his co-host uh, does, uh, Brandy Cyrus, that he's out of a gig. And not only that, we've got a clip from uh, Caitlin Bristow's Off the Vine podcast where Jared and Ashley also discuss why it's not happening. And it really comes down to uh, Golden Bachelor did really well. And if the show can only make so many shows, they're going to ride that Golden Bachelor, Golden Bachelorette train versus the dumpster fire known as Bachelor in Paradise. Will Paradise come back yet to be seen? I think it could come back next year with uh, more high value cast members and more zaniness or whatever. It did take a year off in 2020 due to the COVID uh, pandemic. Do you remember that? Remember that time? Wow, that was a wild time, wasn't it? All righty, we're all snitching on each other. Oh, that was a fun time. All right, follow me on Instagram at dneals, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I'll be live at 12.15 Central Time. So chances are, after you're watching this, come live and join the Patreon. I'll be over there with some behind-the-scenes tea, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. And every morning and afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast, I'm going to share with you what was said this past week on Off the Vine. You might have missed it with Ashley and Jared. Uh, but first, let's go listen to the first minute or so of what Wells and Brandy Cyrus had to say regarding Paradise. And, of course, Wells is the resident bartender slash MC. Have a listen. Yeah. What, what, what chords are you having a problem it's with? It's looking a little messy from the Down, side. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, under, the underling. The yeah. undercarriage. Is, the, yeah. It's looking a little <laughs> messy. Hey, listen. There. We're doing the best we can right mm -hmm. now, okay? Uh-huh. But uh, it's not bad. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, there's just a lot of things happening in here, mm -hmm. but we're doing it, and you know, it's all for the YFTers out there. It truly is. Yeah. Do it's you want your? Do you want a bell? It's your only gig at this point. <laughs> I don't have anything to say. There, there it is, folks. She said it's your only gig at this point. Say to mm -hmm. that. Do you need a bell? Nah. And he says, I, I don't have anything to say to that. By the way, I'm, I'm sure they have a big audience. 5.4 thousand ratings, four point. I mean, that's a very high rated podcast. I just, I don't listen to it. So I was surprised. No, it shouldn't be a surprise. Wells Adams, of course, radio DJ, Brandy Cyrus of the Cyrus family. So it shouldn't be surprising whatsoever. Now we've got bit different articles. There's no need to mourn Bachelor in Paradise, despite what Chris Harrison allegedly heard. So there, there, you know, this article is saying, don't worry. It's not like it's not coming back. We have months to prepare for it. Uh, but of course, we'll actually go to what Chris Harrison said. Uh, it seems as though it's dead. Chris Harrison said, I was a little bummed to hear that Paradise has allegedly been postponed, I think is the official way they're saying it. They're postponing it for a year or canceling it, he said to guest Dean Unglert, who replied, I did hear some whispers about that. Chris Harrison added, obviously, either way, it's never good in TV. We all know this business well enough that when they don't postpone shows that are doing great, but I was bummed to hear that. Production on Bachelor in Paradise typically begins in Mexico in June, meaning there's still months for ABC to make a decision about officially ordering season 10. Yeah, they they, they, they can decide they need to order it. Um, I wouldn't be... It could be picked up, but as of right now, it looks like they're cautiously saying it's not going to happen. I don't understand why they can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Why can't they shoot bachelor in paradise while they shoot golden bachelorette it's it, you don't need to have the same exact crew you can have a different sound guy now i understand they all want to work together but plenty of times you see in the movies there'll be the a the the sort of uh the a unit and b unit and they'll go and run and gun and get their shots uh but i mean people want to work so um as far as why the show hasn't been picked up usually um, you know, reality TV is very cheap to make. I mean, they rent out Salucita, that one resort. They have to hire a medic to make sure no one gets gonorrhea or whatever the hell they're doing. Someone's got to change out the uh, uh, pool filters from all of the spray tans and uh, tequila and, um, you know, uh, missteps, hand jobs. And hey, well, I don't know what's going on below deck there, but uh, they sure do. Either way, I'm not not to say that uh, that. 
that shenanigans aren't going to be happening on Golden Bachelorette. A boy can dream. Uh, older people, they do it too. Point is, is it looks like they're taking this year off as far as right now. And as we watch Women Tell All episode, uh, the Women Tell All episode, there was no, well, will we see you in paradise? None of that stuff. Is Bachelor in Paradise canceled? Info about the TV show. Uh, so here they say it's not canceled. Um, the fan favorites of ABC's wildly successful Bachelor franchise and soon Golden Bachelorette is rumored to cancelled by is rumored to be canceled by various figures in Bachelor Nation. But is there truth to the speculation? Is the show uh, fans dubbed the best thing to come out of the franchise actually canceling its usual reservations for the beach this summer. Uh, the franchise saw major success towards the end of 2023. This year promises to be another one for the books with more Golden Bachelor and Golden Bachelorette. The network confirmed earlier this month that Golden Bachelorette will be part of the fall lineup. The response online and in the industry has largely been praise and excitement for the highly anticipated female-led spinoff. Stay tuned on whether a Florida Golden Bachelor, April Kirkwood, or Ellen, you know, whatever. So it goes on and on and on. Um, wishful thinking, the show's gone. It's done. It's over. Here's what Ashley uh, and Jared had to say on Off the Vine. Now, as we know, Ashley is friends with Sydney, um, of course, villain of this season. And Jared, former guest on Driving with Dave. Also, Caitlin Bristow, former guest on Driving with Dave. So, Ashley here seems to be the missing link. We'll have to get her next time, hopefully, when we're in town. Oh, and so, and it happened so fast for her. Oh like, gosh. it was like a week. And because I don't think I submitted her pictures until like the last week of August or something. So, Ashley submitted Sydney for the show the last week of August. And within a week, she was cast on the show. So, Sydney, how would you say it went? <laughs> <laughs> so, but then, like, now I have this horrible guilt oh, that, yeah. like, she gets on, it does not go according to plan, and it doesn't seem like we have paradise, which would be the ultimate, like, why don't we have paradise? Show. I don't think it's happening. Well, what? it's not confirmed. Nobody knows what's going on Wait, right now. Why? And, like, Sydney, you can well, at least call this out. Bachelorette. And I think that they don't want to overwork production because production now, with the addition of the new Golden Bachelorette, it's just like that's four shows for them a year. These poor people, I don't know how, I don't they, know how they deal do it. with Allegedly. Guys, it's not because they don't want to overwork production. You can hire a new production assistant, you can hire a new person to uh, run a mic up somebody's bikini. Not to say these uh, production production aren't aren't valued by the by by the show here but trust me when you have the fast and the furious franchise making 17 sequels when they're doing well hollywood prints the money it just wasn't doing that well it wasn't you know last season literally nobody made it out of the season people were cheating on each other going for the wrong reasons i would love if paradise is back it's good for my content it's good for my channel here I don't see it happening. So either way, that's what they have to say. Let's see if she said anything else about Paradise. Allegedly, yeah. this is all happening. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's sad. I know. I always feel bad for the producers because I was thinking about them as well and just like their schedule. <laughs> Sydney's probably over there like, I don't feel bad about uh, producers. Well, obviously. <laughs> Different story. Uh, anyway, but yeah. Wait, is Sydney in the room? It almost feels like Sydney's in the room the way they're talking about her. Now, of course, Sydney's their friend. And I know what people say. They go, oh, Dave, you know, Sydney was bad, this and that. Sure, whatever. But like the way she was on the show, the way she handled the girl drama, that's not how everyone is in everyday life, you know? So... Um, I, for one, can have grace for somebody like Sydney, even if others can't. I know it's hard for people. Every year we uh, we ate Greg Grippo. He's the worst. It's just the same BS every year. Sinead, she, she'll make her walk the plank. She's no, you know, uh, disgrace to humanity. It's like okay, all right, I understand. I get it. They're horrible people. Let's move on. Uh, but again, how uh, you know how funny that Ashley's like Sydney. You're gonna be great. They're gonna love you. You're my friend. Blah blah blah. This you know shows open up so many doors to me. And then Sydney comes back being like oh boy i don't think it went well uh so we're gonna do a hard pivot pivot left here to uh chris harrison oh wrong clip here's chris harrison he was on lauren bostick's podcast we covered this on bachelor rush hour the podcast but i'm gonna play three clips of chris harrison on that show have a listen i was the face and the voice of the bachelor for 20 years i did all the interviews because everybody changes right the bachelor leaves there's new contestants or no, whatever you you're the, the constant bachelor. you're the constant and it could have been something benign but something controversial happens send out chris harrison well as things grew more controversy some stuff was very controversial on and off camera send out chris harrison send out chris harrison what you realize later, because you don't think about it at the time, is you're being used for your face and your voice and your likeness. And, you know, I was told many times, hey, go go put that smile on and let's put that Chris Harrison out there. You know, go do your go do the dance. 
you know, make things right, go save it. And you realize your name is on the line here and it's, you know, they're not, they're, they're back at the office. Their name's never going to be in print. And so, and if things go well, thanks, buddy, you did a great job. If things don't go well, you're on your own and you realize you look behind you and you're like, oh crap, nobody's standing behind me anymore. So there it is. Chris Harrison realizes how corporations work out. And look, that's exactly what happened with the villains on the franchise, the villains that don't make any money. At least Chris Harrison made a cool dollar. And, you know, he, he, he has to know he was never their friend. Your bosses are never your friends. Oh, it's like a family environment here. No, no, no. They need you to make them money. That's it. OK, let's move it on to the Who's next someone clip. who fought against the producers. Trying to think of a, of a Kelly bachelor. Flanagan from Peter Weber's season comes yeah. to mind for me. She was always remember how she just laid down like she just took naps. I, I I can't remember what Kelly's story of coming onto the show was, but I remember thinking I don't know why she's here. You know, yeah. but Juan our, Pablo, oh. okay, you know, kind of bucked the, the system, and the system turned against him. So what happened there? How did that go? They it was the first time that they turned against a lead, and and they decided we're just going to not make him the golden boy. We're going to just show him as he is, and it didn't come off well and because usually our villain, leads are protected bachelor. you want the bachelor bachelorette to be seen as perfect wow very I, interesting so he says juan pablo was the first lead that they turned against because didn't things didn't go well uh kelly flanagan would take naps when she wanted to of course kelly flanagan you know she's a lawyer she probably knows her worth and she knows not to be bossed around and she goes you know what i'm tired i'm gonna go take a nap like what are you gonna do about it all right let's go to our final clip here from chris harrison and the bachelor came around and i got that gig and i was like but it was it wasn't The Bachelor. It was just a reality show. No one had heard of reality TV. Survivor had just started when I got the gig. You know, you look back on it and you think, oh my God, that was groundbreaking. It was not at the time. And so Survivor was on, but it was a game show that we could all understand, right? It was groundbreaking, but understandable because it was a game. It was a competition. The Bachelor yeah. was no, no longer a game. There was nothing on the line. We weren't offering you a million dollars. We offered you nothing, in fact. The whole catch was, it was like Seinfeld. The show's about nothing. You were at the end left with, are you going to choose love? And that's it. Camera stop. Game over. There was you no house. You got a ring. Yeah, but there's no house. There's no million dollars. There's no, it no was I guess just, you're right. There's love. Yeah, that's but it. people love love. Is that important yes. enough? And the answer was yes. We all have an insatiable appetite for love. You're right. You were asking that question and the answer was yes. Everybody like, that's everybody's ultimate goal, right? Is true love. Yeah, I mean, true Who's love someone is. someone who fought against the producer? Excuse me. True love is a common denominator in life. I mean, it's why we watch these shows, but it's also for the drama and the human element. Can you believe what so-and-so said to so-and-so? And then we talk about it afterwards. It's almost as if the show is important, but it's not the be-all, end-all. The parasocial relationship after, the discussion after, is what fuels us as a species. Having the ability to communicate with each other in chat rooms, in comment sections about what we see is almost as valuable as seeing it ourselves. That's why it's so much more fun. You can't watch the show alone. You got to watch it with a partner. Can you believe so and so? He's this and that. You know, you go back and forth, and that's kind of what uh, that's kind of what the show does. It's a starting off point to larger conversations about um, about uh, social aspects of life. But uh, all good things come to an end, and it looks as though paradise is over. If there's any information that resurrects it, Weekend at Bernie style, I'll let you know. I think they could find new ways to give Paradise another shot, switch it up a little bit. Maybe, I hate to say this, have more dynamic cast members. Maybe that's what they need to do. You know what I mean? We'll have to see how it all plays out. And again, nothing against other cast members, but you know, there are certain seasons where there's people that are just made for paradise. And uh, this past season, it seems like a lot of people that were struggling to kind of, you know, get an edit that would work for them versus just being themselves on the show, which could be a result of all of the sort of canceling and outrage that goes on when somebody like do you miss the times when we had corinne olympios and shanae and all of the chaos that came from chad johnson's those types of people they don't exist every day and they don't want to be on a show where they get shredded to pieces i think it would work better if we laid off them in real life and and then we could enjoy more the chaos that they bring to the screen so it's kind of self-created our own policing of the toxicity has led to less toxicity and now we're like well what about the toxicity we canceled it folks let me know what you guys think i'll be live on patreon right after this bachelor rush hour this afternoon bye everybody